I'm going to walk you through in the next couple presentations an introduction to Doctor Who. Um, basically, it is a science fiction series created in 1963 um, that is quintessentially British. It was created as a children's show to um, educate but also entertain, and we will see that it has maintained its idea of being a show geared toward the younger crowd and the problems that that causes um, today when it draws a much older crowd into it. Um, this year is its 50th anniversary. Um, the, this particular season is leading up to um, the big anniversary show in November. The basic premise is about a Time Lord called the Doctor. Um, and he travels around in his starship called the TARDIS, which is disguised as a box. And so we're going to be looking at each aspect of this. But the Doctor is basically um, an alien from the planet Gallifrey. Not everyone from Gallifrey is a Time Lord, but all Time Lords did come from Gallifrey. So there were certain people who were selected and trained and tested and eventually would become a Time Lord, and that means that they could travel in time and space. Eventually there were conflicts and there was a war called the Time War between the Time Lords and an alien enemy, the Daleks. Um, both were really going to destroy each other and the entire universe in this war and so our particular doctor decided to um, end the war by destroying both the Time Lords and the Daleks. When he is close to death, he is able to regenerate into a new form. He's able to heal himself, and when he's done regenerating, he is actually basically in a new body. Um, this was a convenient um, trick for the producers, that whenever a particular doctor wanted to leave the program, then they could recast, have the doctor go through regeneration, new actor. Um, his personality changes, his appearance changes, but he's still the same doctor and we will discuss this aspect of identity this term. When we talk about the doctor, um, we refer to them numerically. There have been 11 doctors so far and so they're referred to as the first doctor, the second doctor, etc. Um, they often can be referred to as 9 or 11 and so if we talk about 11, then we're talking about the 11th Doctor, although they never refer to themselves numerically. They always refer to themselves as Doctor. The Doctor always travels with a companion, someone who is a substitute for the audience. The companion will ask questions and be confused and need the Doctor to explain things. And when the Doctor explains them, not only to the companion, he's explaining them to us, the audience. His first companion was his granddaughter, Susan, and her teachers, Ian and Barbara. And then throughout the run there were some different companions who came in. Some would stay for a while, some would be there for one episode, and again they would just come back and forth. And for the most part they were human or human-like. We then had the first change after three years to the second Doctor. Again you can see a new appearance, um, a quirkier Doctor, but when we start to see some of his companions, you see the same faces again. So especially in the early years, they recycled companions. Um, and so this also was a cost saving. Then with the third Doctor, we move into the 1970s. So you can see by his outfit that he's very much dated to the 70s. And the show has always been a very trendy show. And so you can, as you go through the years, pretty much pick up what decade a particular doctor represents by how he is dressed. Um, the special effects on the show, um, it's always tried to be cutting edge, but the problem with being cutting edge is that when new technology comes along, your previous cutting edge technology looks really dated. And so that is also a problem that we will run into as we're watching some of the episodes. So again, several companions. Sarah Jane Smith, one of the most popular. We will see her come back with the fourth Doctor and with the tenth Doctor. 
Fourth Doctor, by far, um, as far as the classic doctors, the most popular. Um, and this is because this was the first doctor that was exported to the U.S. For the most part, in the mid-70s, PBS started showing Doctor Who. And so for many Americans, this was their first view of Doctor Who. Um, he is very well recognized for the long neck scarf. And it was overly long, goes down to his feet. Um, Sarah Jane Smith comes back as a companion. We have a few other companions. See the first mechanical robot. We also have a time lady. Ramana comes in. Somehow she escaped destruction in the time war. And um, she comes back as well. Again, we're going to see some repetition of these last three companions when we move to the fifth doctor who also is a very quirky doctor. You can see he has a stalk of celery in his lapel. Um, a much younger doctor than the others had been. And so he brought a different um, character and a different way of playing the doctor. And he was a, a very popular one as well. We see some of the same uh, companions come along as well. Adric for a bit, um, Nyssa and Tegan few others join in from time to time. And then we moved to the sixth doctor who was, for the most part, one of the most universally disliked doctors. He only made it two years. Um, again, reusing of some of the companions. And then we had the seventh doctor. And finally, in what is considered the classic era, the eighth doctor, I'm sorry, there's a typo there, it's supposed to be the eighth doctor, not the eighth doctor. Um, Paul McGann played the doctor in a 1996 made for television show um, that was actually a pilot uh, that was um, asked for by Fox in the US. And so it was played on US television as well as BBC. Didn't really score big in the ratings and so the pilot never went anywhere. And so this was the end of the era of the Doctor as far as the classic Doctor. And from 1996 to 2005 nothing happened with the program and then we see it being relaunched in 2005 with the Ninth Doctor.